Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. On the episode last week, we talked about two-part injection molding for soft plastic lures, and it went a little something like this. It's just going to be this very simple sketch. I'm getting an idea in my head of what I wanted, so I wanted it to look like this in the end, right? So in my brain, my thought patterns, a bunch of beers later, that's under Create Loft. That's going to kind of smooth these two out for me. Print them off on your favorite printer or your not favorite printer or the printer you want to throw out the window or the printer that's been broken in my basement for four months, you know. Print it on whatever you have. Okay, so you're all caught up now. So before, we went ahead and modeled everything we wanted to do in Fusion 360 and then we printed it out. I printed mine out on the Anet A8. I used PETG plastic. Uh, I like PETG a little bit better than PLA. Although for... Something like this, kind of a consumable mold, you can use PLA just fine. I printed my last couple here, the last couple days with PLA. It's been working out really well, so uh, there's no reason why you can't use any type of filament that you have in the printer, and that's pretty much what I do. Whatever is in my printer, it's what I print with, because it takes some work to switch them out, and I'm pretty lazy. So there's a few things you're going to need after this point. Once you have your mold printed already on your printer, you're going to need some su supplies. So let's have a couple day younger Elliot tell you what those are. All right, so I'm out in the garage with a lavalier mic, so I apologize if the audio is a little bit sketchy, but it's what i got to work with. I laid out everything that we're going to use for actually making the mold, and I'll run through those real quick just in case you want to get a, an uh, EN equipment list going together. So right off the bat, uh, we're going to do gloves. These are just nitrile. Uh, they're called Venom Steel. They're on sale. The black ones are a lot thicker than the common blue ones, so I prefer the black, but any nitrile glove really works pretty well. A container of rice, we're going to use that for volume estimations of our mold, and then a basically a large funnel that's an oil drain funnel that's going to take the rice uh, back into here so we don't have a big mess uh, to deal with and then these are large syringes this is 200 cc i cut the tops off of these uh, so it gives me a much larger end this is what i use to extract the silicone out of the container it's a lot cleaner a lot nicer just makes life a lot easier. This is just a basic kitchen scale, nothing real special here, uh, just as long as it goes to about grams. To measure out the hardener, ideally you would have something a little bit higher resolution than this. A reloading scale works really well, but this is what I have, so this is what I use. Then you want some kind of platform. Uh, you just use an old 3D print. This is going to be where you lay down the silicone uh, after you've mixed it. It makes life a lot easier not getting that on your workbench. These are 3D printed, I guess, mixing blades for just 3 8 dowels. I use these to mix the silicone and mix in the hardener. Much nicer than doing it by hand. Get a nice thorough mix and we're going to vacuum chamber out the air bubbles anyway so it works. And because they're 3D printed, very economical. Then you just need some whatever, containers, whatever you can do, potato salad, whatever. It's always good to have paper towels, always. And then you're going to need some type of silicone. I'm using Mold Max 60 on this build. Uh, gives really good high heat tolerance. That's why I use it for the Plastisol molds. Um, no real complaints other than price, but all silicone's rather pricey, so this is kind of how it is then a vacuum chamber this i believe is a two point or 3.5 cfm i think um vacuum pump real cheap off of ebay not much to say there vacuum chamber this is a like a shatter vac or something chamber it doesn't really matter what they are this was another ebay purchase it's got a nice oil gauge which is nice but other than that nothing big then you need some type of pry bar to get the mold out of the print when you're done. I just use one of these cheapo pry bars. Uh, it doesn't have to be that long, but the longer or the wider the blade on the end seems to help quite a bit. Mold release is nice. 
this is just a silicone based mold release for silicone mold making. Uh, you can get that from Smooth On or wherever. Helps quite a bit to uh, spray the mold first. It doesn't get stuck as bad. You'd like a cordless drill to do your mixing. Uh, anything is fine. And then your mold itself. So we're going to be pouring this mold today. This is a, I'm calling it the water flea. It's probably a little hard to see there, but it's just three ends on a panfish jig. And then you want some plastic cups. Uh, they're pretty simple. Get them at Walmart or whatever. Those are going to help for our volume estimations. We're going to write on there with a Sharpie, which is something else you should probably have. I'm going to run through this, how I kind of go about doing these molds. Uh, you're going to be able to tell that this mold is not the one we designed in episode one. The reason for that is I wanted to make sure that I went over design of a mold that was actually going to work really well for you if you designed one similar to that. So that flat grub that we did last week, I had already printed that off and poured the silicone mold for it. So we've, we're not going to talk about that. But this same process that we're going to go through here is going to be ap ap applicable? applicable? Applicable to any other mold that you would print. Uh, so as long as you have a printed two-piece mold that you can use for injecting, and the sole purpose and design of that mold was this, this same process will work. And this isn't a hard and fast truth. This is just basically what I do. So that's just the run of it. You can figure out how to do this in any other number of ways. doesn't mean this way is the right way. It just means it's the way I do it. So first what we're going to do is we need to find the volume of those molds. The easiest way for me to do that is just to use some rice and a clear plastic cup. So what I'm going to do is fill up one half of the mold because these are going to be two halves that are more or less identical in volume. I'm just using instant rice because we had it at the house. I pour the rice from the mold so then I have a volume. I mark that slightly higher on the plastic cup just so I know that I'll have a little bit extra because when you pour these out of whatever container you're measuring and mixing from, you're going to lose, I found, about 20 to 30 grams of material. So you want to kind of buffer yourself for that, so add a little bit more as you're weighing it out. I just mix up the silicone first. You want to make sure that's thoroughly mixed. We're going to take the 200cc syringe, sterile syringe. It doesn't have to be sterile, obviously. The really cool part about the silicone during this process of extraction is that the silicone never sets up if unless it has the part B. So you can use the same injector over and over and over again because that silicone will stay in the injector and not harden up whatsoever. It doesn't even dry out, which is uh, interesting. There's still a stain in my carpet downstairs, and uh, it doesn't come out. It's two and a half years later, it's still there. I'm going to fill up the cup to my line, and that line's going to tell me what my weight is then for each half of the mold. So all I need to do then is fill up my mixing bowl with the other half of the weight. So then the next step, after you've measured out enough silicone for both parts is to add the hardener. So I'm going to add part B here at a 3%, so it's 100 to 3 ratio. So now it's just a process of mixing the silicone part A and part B. I'm going to use the same mixer during this process because then I can keep that mixer uh, and the silicone will harden on it and then I can peel that off later and reuse it. So it's a lot nicer than using like an epoxy or something because one, it's a one and done mix cycle. Uh, the first time you mix the epoxy, it's stuck to the mixer and then you're done. The silicone you can actually peel off and use multiple times. So I'm going to mix that thoroughly, you know, go until it's mixed and then mix it some more. Place it into a vacuum chamber. I don't think this step is absolutely necessary. You can do the mold and you can experience some bubbles in there, but not a whole lot. If you're mixing with a power drill like I am, you're going to introduce a lot more air that may introduce a little bit more uh, of air bubbles trapped in the mold. I recommend vacuum degassing the material because it makes the mold that much better to have zero issues with any of the the holes in there but I wouldn't let the fact that you don't have a vacuum chamber stop you from making molds so then once you have a degas silicone you want to pour it into the molds before you do that uh, I like to put on mold release just gives me a little bit more peace of mind using the release agent the only thing to note here is do not spray the molds with release agent before you check the volume with rice I've done it a few times and 
it takes a long time to get the rice unstuck from the the release agent so just letting you know if you do do that it's not the end of the world you can always blow it out with an air compressor it's just another kind of bonehead move try not to do it i've done it before don't be like me the pot life on Molmax 60, they say it's around 45 minutes to an hour. I've discovered that it's around a half an hour, so you kind of want to work pretty quickly at this. But after they're poured, it takes about 24 hours to cure. I found that anything under about 20 hours, you don't really want to mess with it. You spent a lot of time working on this mold. It's okay to just give it another four hours or so and let it cure and set up. I use a... Uh, pry bar to get the molds out it's not necessarily what you have to use it just works for me it's nice to slide in between the silicone and the mold box sides works really well so far haven't had a problem the only thing you want to do when you're demolding is make sure you don't hook around to the back side where the lure portion of the silicone will be because you might tear that so as long as you're just cognizant of working it out slowly it'll eventually pop out so once you have those two, you're set up, you're good. What you want to do is kind of make some wooden support sides. So I made some support sides just out of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, what I do is I mark the top of where I've put in my bolt locations. I just mark that with a little bit of paint or a little bit of soft plastic dye, something that I can push that wood then down on top of, and it'll give me where I need to drill my holes. You could also do this after the silicone's completely removed from the mold and just drill, uh, use a drill to mark locations of holes. That's perfectly acceptable too. Doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you have some support behind the silicone pushing it together, because that makes the mold that much tighter and it makes the poor end result much cleaner. So once you have the wooden sides and the mold extracted and everything ready to go, you kind of want to keep those together. This is something I've been doing recently. I've come up with kind of a mold bracket design that holds the bolts in place. Uh, this is also 3D printed. I use one and a half inch fender washers with quarter 20 grade 8 bolts. Uh, these are just common things you can get at the hardware store. I found that using clamps in the workshop gets a little bit tedious, gets a little bit of a problem, and you always end up running out of clamps. So this was my solution to that. So I make the bolt brackets at the same time that I'm designing the mold. After I come up with the mold, I just go through, I look at my bolt locations where I'm going to have a through bolt, and then I design around that just a small bracket that ends up screwing into the three-quarter plywood. And that's just using a three-quarter inch screw, a wood screw, and there's just some mounting locations on there. So once you have your plastics all ready, you have it all dyed up in the colors you want, you have some specific glitter in there, whatever, you're ready to shoot the mold. The key things to remember about this is plastic is hot, very hot. It can burn you. It's good to use gloves. If you're a 3D printing nerd like me, you can't feel your fingers anyway because a hot end and filament been stuck on it for years. Either way, make sure you're safe and cognizant that this is hot stuff. It could burn you. It's dangerous. You want to be careful and be smart about it. So we draw it up into the injector. We push it down into the mold. Every mold's going to be a little bit different. You can shoot these molds cool. Silicone's going to be cool, cool no matter what. It's going to take exorbitant amount of energy to heat up that mold. You push into the injector. I like to hold for a few seconds just to make sure it fills up any cavities or anything. And then you leave a little bit on top where you inject it. So just squirt a little bit in there. So when it cools, that plastisol is going to retract a little bit. And we want to make sure there's some at the top that it can pull down. Releasing the mold is very simple. You give it a setup time usually it's a few seconds doesn't take that long seems to be working well with this workflow so far i end up shooting about three or four times with plastisol out i'm using dead-on plastics uh now i've switched from alumisol to dead-on and it seems to be working really really well it has a good setup as long as you heat it to about 350 fahrenheit or so i'm using just a infrared thermometer 350 degrees or so is what they advise to start with. I've found you can inject this dead-on plastic to about 295 degrees or so. Then it starts to set up and be a little too thick. So you end up getting quite a few on one heat, and then you can redo it and do it again. So, of course, remember, safety is always important. A few basic things you need while working in the shop. Obviously, safety. You want to wear some type of eye protection. Plastisol is not 
a huge deal with that, but you don't want hot plastic in your eye, so wear some eye protection. Uh, some gloves help tremendously, especially if you're doing quite a few shoots at once. Your injector is going to get quite hot. It's good to have gloves. And then some sort of ventilation. Uh, the SDS on this, material sheets, um, not really that dangerous, they say, but if you can smell it, try not to inhale it. So that's my motto. I, I leave the garage door open. I have a back and front door to the garage, so I get a lot of air movement through that. And then I have an overhead fan that disperses uh, onto my workbench table area that I work at. And then I have a fan blowing straight from the microwave to kind of take some of those plastic cell fumes out. So remember, you only get two lungs, you only have two eyes, and you only have two hands. So you want to keep all of those things in working order for as long as possible. So I'm going to probably start putting out more videos and more videos because I'm going to make molds and then shoot them. And I'll show you what those look like. Now that we have this kind of out of the way, these are going to be two longer videos. You know, episode one was approaching half an hour. I'm sure this one will approach half an hour as well. But I wanted to tell you how you can do this if you start seeing me post videos about, uh, oh, I made a new soft bait today. This one was 3D printed as well. The yada, yada, yada. I want to make sure that you guys have the resources that you can go back and say, how did he do it? Let's check it out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully uh, you learned a little bit of something. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. You know, I gave her a try. Gave her the old college try. If I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, you know? There's only so much you can do uh, being one man on the internet. It's a long road to hole. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe uh, join the Discord. Good group of folks there. Uh, I'll put that up somewhere here. Also, feel free to hit me up on any social media platforms I got. A bunch of them uh, don't use the tweeter very much but I am uh, kind of getting into the Instagram I prefer just pictures right you don't have to go down the rabbit hole of people posting stuff to text with Instagram it's just a photo and you move on it's kind of nice it's relaxing more videos coming up they will be a lot more shorter form showing you like this is what it is this is what it looks like have a good day have a good month, have a good year, good night, if that's where you're watching this. I'm going to go because I'm rambling. Keep your amps up. I did that backwards. Until the next one. Keep your amps up and your filament dry. <laughs>